Hey guys, so today we're going to be making our very own penny battery. I got some complaints last time saying that the items weren't household, so you know what? This time I'll make the household items extra household for you guys. We're just going to need some pennies. Uh, if you're American, you're going to want pennies that were made from 1983 to present. If you're using Canadian pennies, then find the ones that are from 1997 to 1999. So what we want to do is to take a strip of cardboard with a width that's just a bit more than the pennies. This will act as our salt bridge if you guys took chemistry. Uh, I just took a penny and I drew a line right down the cardboard and sliced away for the strip. After that I took my scissors and cut pieces of cardboard that fit onto the penny shape. From there I went ahead and mixed salt with water to get our electrolytic solution. Now you can also use vinegar or lemon juice, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's citric, it'll work. Now I cut about 9 strips here, but you guys can cut as many as you want, depending on how strong you want your battery to be. After you're done, just drop your cardboard into the vinegar and let it soak up. Here comes the hard part. Taking some sandpaper, we're going to have to shave away the copper coating that's surrounding the penny to get to the zinc body. Zinc and copper can be used as a redox reaction, so that's how we're going to get our voltage. This is the result of hours of slaving away at the penny. I sort of got lazy and didn't shave it all the way down, but that's okay. As long as there is zinc exposed on one side, it should be fine. But make sure you try to clean up a little bit more than me. I was just too tired. After that, I went ahead and grabbed my multimeter and tested the battery to see if it had any voltage on it. At first, with no salt bridge, you can clearly see that it was producing zero volts. But after I placed that juicy cardboard on top of it, it started producing 0.8 volts. Now that's crazy! To give you guys a little comparison, with one penny and a piece of wet cardboard, you're producing half of a double A battery. That's like 50 cent battery, made out of one cent. Now all that's left is the building part. I took a piece of aluminum foil, this will serve as our negative lead, and from there I stacked a penny with the bronze coating facing down, and then a piece of cardboard on top. You can also do this with a normal penny and buying zinc washers from your local hardware store. The chemistry is all the same. Alright, after that I just took some electrical tape and taped it all together with some wires sticking out at the top and bottom as positive and negative. Now let the testing begin. Hooking up to a small cell powered calculator, as you can see you can easily power it on. But I decided to take a step further and see if I could power something even better than that. Here I have my Game Boy Advance and I decided to take two small batteries and hook it up the same way. Hit the switch and BOOM! There we go! Power to the Game Boy! Now you can enjoy your favorite games 10 years ago. Now, because I love the power of science, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to jumpstart my mom's van using the same technique of building our own batteries. So, I went ahead and drained the battery off uh, my mom's van. Don't try this at home. It's uh, actually really bad, but don't tell her. So, as you guys can see, stepping inside, when I try to turn it on, nothing. It's completely dead right now. And I think I'll be able to jumpstart it using I need about 30 amps and I'm probably going to be able to use about 200 pennies. Now instead of shaving it down for the zinc, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the store and buy some zinc washers. It's going to be the same thing. We're just going to be layering it, uh, zinc and then the penny and then the zinc and then the penny and then combining it in series to get the amount of voltage and current that we need. Hey guys, so I have my here, uh, my jumper cables. And I finished the design for my battery, you know, looks pretty good. Uh, I designed it in a way so that my longer aluminum foil over here would be the positive end. And then over here would be the negative end. I used aluminum because um, the cables have to carry so much current, right? They're, they're going to need a bigger surface area for the electrons to go through. That's why I use aluminum. And aluminum is pretty good uh, conductor too, so that's not bad. So over here I'm going to put it on. Oh frick, it's bending a little bit, but that's okay. Alright, as long as nothing breaks, I'm going to connect it into the car. Red to 
red. Right here, it's good. Alright, and we're gonna see if uh, I can actually do this. Here we go, first one. This one also. Oh my god, check it out! That's the power of science, guys. You guys are able to do anything you want as long as you have the knowledge, okay? Alright. Thank you guys for watching. I'm actually really surprised that this was able to work. Like I was really, really surprised. Like on paper it said it would, but in real life, you know, there's so many constraints with like the voltage drop across the wires, not having enough current through the cables, all that stuff. Uh, but stay in school to make sure you learn more about science, you know, because it's really cool in physics. And uh, make sure you guys subscribe and comment down below. Thanks for watching, guys.